Hey, what's up everyone? This is Grace 21 I'm going to show you my custom build that I'm doing. I was going to want to show you guys until I was farther along, but I would like to uh, not only upload a video to show you guys, but to uh, have my uploads of this video to show my progress and uh, to keep it for records for me, too, also. So first, uh, I only got about 13 minutes to do this video before uh, my uh, SD card runs out, so this is what I got. This is a ProLine, the GT8 body. This uh, chassis I'm making is out of Plexi. Uh, it's about 18 inches long, uh, uh, wide, and I believe it's 30 ten, 36 inches long. In order to fit that uh, GT8 body on there and make it a fat vehicle to keep all the wheels underneath the body, nice and tucked under to, uh, to help with aerodynamics, I had to uh, expand it. I split it down the middle and then uh, braced it. I probably had to do about five to six inches of, uh, of uh, um, extending outwards. The body's in a little bit crude right now just because I had to do some spare uh, plexi that I bought and then uh, glue it all up really tight. But uh, uh, the body's got a lot more to go. It's going to look really, really nice once I'm done. But that's just to get everything centered and uh, to lined up. So this is the body there. Now you guys got to check out what I'm doing here. Man, oh man, it's a lot. Uh, this is uh, a whole front end from um, a Traxxas Slash. What I did is I bought a roller. And then um, if you look, I actually have the wheels inside the chassis. So I have the cutout inside the chassis so the wheels will all be inboard and uh, clean aerodynamically. Here's the, the front of the Slash uh, front end. And then I'm running the Erevo uh, shocks. I have them outwards that are uh, bolting up to the caster blocks for uh, a little more sportier ride and, and uh, should handle a little better uh, during speed runs. I uh, just had to do some custom uh, body posts. These are from a Fortec Traxxas and then a piece of, piece of wood that I had to do uh, extended upwards. Uh, I noticed with the front shock tower that uh, it had too much flex uh, when I was pushing down onto the chassis. So I built this uh, brace. Um, this is from a Mini LST2. So I built that up in there. Uh, I'm, I want to run, my goal on this project is to run as much stock Traxxas uh, stuff as possible. No RPM, no aluminum, bulkheads, no RPM, A-arms, none of that. Why? It's just, it'll be fun to, uh, you know, if I end up wrecking it or having an issue, it'll be extremely cheap to fix. And uh, I kind of want to see what I can do with this. So, of course, I got the GRPs, the Integi 17mm hub adapters. Here is uh, the steering. That is the stock steering from a Slash. Uh, what I did on this is uh, trimmed it up and used the actual plate so I can use that as my steering. That uh, brace right there is from uh, an E-Revo. That's for a servo arm. So I noticed that when I was steering it, it uh, had too much flex in the plastic. Uh, my Slash, I'm running all aluminum, but like I said, I don't want to um, go too much aluminum on this. I kind of want to keep it as cheap as possible with uh, the cost. Uh, so I I noticed there's too much flex, so this is an E-Revo uh, servo uh, horn right there, That not horn, but uh, actual arm. And then what I did is I bolt those two together, and that keeps it a little more stiff. There's still a little bit of flex because it's plastic, but uh, you know, it's way, way better. So that stiffened up, that stiffened up the steering. I built uh, my own servo uh, mount and then the servo I'm running is just a solar D651. I've never ran a solar. It's all metal, digital, uh, high torque. I was going to run the stock servo because, you know, it's just two-wheel drive. But this thing's going to be heavy. So uh, I want to have someone with uh, a little more torque. I think this is close to 200 ounces of torque at 6 volts. I got my uh, Trinogy Nanotech 6S, uh, 36C. Uh, and into 130C burst plus. I'm running two of these in this rig. All right, two of them. This one um, I already, bolt, uh, already uh, soldered on to 6.5 bullet connectors. They come stock with a uh, 5.5s. So I got to still work on this. Now uh, the chassis I'm running is just a full flat pan uh, plexi. Right, what you see right here is just Gorilla Tape. Uh, I still have to finish everything. I got to take the whole front end off. Why I'm Gorilla Taping it? One is uh, I like the looks a little better than just clear plastic. 
Second of all, it's uh, if, if I have any kind of cracks or if anything does break, the grill tape will hold it in place. So hopefully if I'm under a, a hard run or something and something does snap, it will hold it in place and I can maybe get the vehicle stopped prior to it breaking and just shearing off and flying somewhere else. So like I said, this is all uh, what I was, you know, came in a dream when I was, uh, you know, just laying there in bed and it just hit me and I was like, man, I got to try this build. I want to keep things as aerodynamic as possible. That's why I have everything inside. The wheels are all in board right now. Uh, and then this is what I'm, and then in the back right here, I got a lot more to go, guys. So, uh, you know, stay with me on this and uh, keep on watching the updates. I still got a lot. I'm going to be uh, using angle aluminum uh, L brackets all the way across to strengthen it and then to keep the body inwards. So I still have to do that. I got a lot to go. But check this out, boys. Check this out. That is a dual. Dual. I mean, running dual. 2200 KB Mama Monsters. Dual. Two. I got one set in right now. It's a 2200 KB, and then uh, it's just a Mama Monster. And then I'll be getting a second one to be running right here. And then a second ESC. Um, check that out. Those are two Integi transmissions linked together. Never been done before. This is what came in my head that I want to do. This vehicle is going to be a 12S. 12S. Is it insane? Absolutely. Is it overkill? You betcha. This is what I wanted to do. Uh, I have no idea how these transmissions are even going to hold up. Okay. So this is how I mated the two transmissions together. Man, if I had some more light. That I'm running the heavy duty drive shafts, but the center drive shaft uh, I'm running just stock. If you know on uh, Traxxas vehicles with the drive shafts, they have the actual axle. Uh, they have the drive shaft and then they have the, the metal axle. And then that's what actually bolts up to the wheel. But on the end of them, that actually, the yokes that actually mount up to the drive shaft, I took off the axle part and just using the dual yokes so I can make them both together. Oh, man, it's so hard to see with this lighting. I try to get as much light as possible for you guys. But if just, just an idea, here's one of the yokes for the center drive shaft. What I did to the other side is take off the stock one with the axle and then... Uh, replace it with a, another yoke just like this. So these two are linked together. And then just same on the other side, right there. I'm going to be running uh, 3629. Why I'm doing that is because this vehicle is going to be way overkill, period. Uh, I uh, am running a plastic spur. Why I'm doing that is, uh, I'll tell you guys, plastic because this thing's going to have so much power and torque. I'd rather chew up plastic spurs then destroy the whole transmission or gearbox so this is all for test I have no idea what's gonna do I don't know if it's gonna just tear itself apart or it's gonna work perfect I have no idea that's why I'm running the HD's here but I'm using the stock one center uh, with that much power you really want to have a weak point if you need one uh, you want the cheapest thing to break then the most expensive so first, I hope maybe the spur that's like a couple bucks goes out and it saves the drive line. If not, it might just twist the center drive shaft and uh, that's super cheap and easy to fix. Uh, the way I mounted it up is I have enough room so I can take the little bolt out of the yoke and slide it and replace the drive shaft without even removing the transmissions. Everything I was doing with this build is uh, my ideal of having things in the open, easy to work on, aerodynamic with the flat pan and over over power uh, <laughs> it, it, it's just it's literally insane it's it's totally insane I, I still have to do uh, battery mounts and get the other ESC the other motor um, do all the framing I really have to make this thing more rigid so um, you be running uh, aluminum uh, L brackets across uh, to stiffen this up to uh, keep any kind of flex in it but check that out. Isn't that, isn't that badass? It's never been done before. Uh, you know, I, I have the, the bolt, uh, just to bolt the shock towers uh, on there, but I just split 
the stock um, body posts. I split them in half and then just extended it out so I can run uh, the, the wide uh, GTA uh, Pro Line body. Uh, geez, guys, <laughs> it's just there's so much customing. Uh, this right here is a, a center plate that I built uh, to link them two together to stiffen it up to make it stronger. Uh, there's going to be so much torque going through this. Am I trying to build this to have uh, the the fastest vehicle in the world and uh, you know compete with Tim Smith, Tim Smith's record? Or, no, no, no. That's not what it's for. This is for a fun, high-speed build that I have no clue what to expect. It's never been done before. Uh, plexi chassis, wood chassis, all that have been done. 12S, dual Mama Monsters linked to the same transmissions you tell me if you ever seen that before I know I haven't so uh, that baby's gonna be sick it's going to be sick um, I know I'm forgetting stuff because it's literally insane of a build but it's been taking me a long time to build um, you know with uh, with work and taking care of my daughter so uh, check this out I mean it's just it's so sick I mean I'm gonna use the aluminum brackets here to keep the body in so they'll get no air over it and won't lift the body up. Um, check this out underneath. Hopefully you can see it. Oh, can you? If you look really closely, let me see if I can put it down. There we go. If you guys look really closely, I built my own uh, diffusers underneath the car. You see them? You see the aluminum? I did my own rear diffuser. Uh, it serves two purposes. One, it, it, it uh, keeps uh, the transmissions and, and uh, it bolts up to the bottom of the gearbox transmissions, whatever you want to call it, and uh, makes it stronger, somewhere to, to actually bind up more and, and to give it more strength off the, from the plexi. But at the same time, they end up being rear diffusers. Um, there, there you go, you can get a better shot like that. So you guys see what I'm saying? There's an L bracket all the way underneath and that's a rear diffuser kind of style. It's pretty sick, it looks good, and uh, who knows how well it's going to work or not, but if it doesn't really do much, at least it uh, strengthens up these gearboxes more. So those, uh, this piece of aluminum you see right here, that's um, the, the L aluminum, uh, uh, sorry, I'm just kind of stuttering, I'm trying to go fast, I'm going to be running out of time here. Uh, that's just an L aluminum piece that I'm going to be running across the whole side of this vehicle and uh, all the way around to keep the body in, like I was saying before, but to strengthen it up. And then I'm be using building braces uh, across to keep it from uh, any sagging. This thing is going to be heavy. It's going to be torquey, and it's probably going to be insane. But check that out, though. These wheels are all going to be inside. I have just enough room so you can steer, and it doesn't touch. Um, for how much throw I usually use, I only put about 15% under high speed anyways. Um, 